a warm welcome to the widow's oil. On this channel, um, I'd like to invite fellow disciples of Jesus to study with me, um, especially in this time where the heavens have indeed opened spiritually and there is so much for us to learn um, and so much is being revealed. I welcome you and I invite you to come and study with me. Um, over the um, many years that I have studied the Bible, I have collected quite a lot of oil, um, wonderful things that I found out, and I will gladly share because the Lord freely gave me, me and I will gladly share what I know um, with any other disciple of Jesus and in, in return receive um from them again and so iron will sharpen iron and we will have um great fellowship together so i invite you to this channel this is the first video and um the topic i am going to do today is a very important topic at the moment which is indeed um, being spoken about, about a lot in the church and on the internet um, because of the happenings in the Middle East and in Israel. And that topic is um, on the topic of who is Israel. Now, I'm not going to discuss everything in a long, long um session but going to break it up into small bits um, because I am still a disciple and so I I don't know everything and so it's easier for me to share small bits of things that I do know um, and look at smaller parts the Lord um, explained in the book of Isaiah because of the stubbornness of the people's hearts that he would teach them little by little but since the outpouring of the holy spirit we have access to the holy spirit and the holy spirit leads us into um all truth now that leading us into all truth also happens um over time and um we not all of us are able to to understand a lot, but we all have our things that the Lord has shown us. And so I would like to go slowly and look at a few things regarding who is Israel. Um, the scripture teaches that, that the church is Israel. Um, now, of course, if, if we say that, then immediately, um, you know, we get told we are practicing dispens dispensational theology. You know, people just slap labels on and then they shut their ears. But um, I'm going to show you over the course of a few uh, videos that indeed the Bible does say, speak of uh, is the spiritual Israel. And um, today I want to show you in Galatians 3 how um, how actually looking at Israel out there is us returning to works of the flesh rather than to remain in the spirit as um, we were given the Holy Spirit and Jesus told us that you know it is in the spirit that we find life and that the flesh profits nothing. And he said his words are spirit. And so the church, the new Jerusalem also is of the spirit and not um, the, what Paul calls the Jerusalem now, which is of the flesh and is in bondage with her children. So I would like to share my screen with you. Um, and then we can have a look um, at Galatians 3. So I read this morning in Galatians 3, and it says there, O foolish Galatians, 
who bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect in the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? And so what sprung out this morning to me is these words of Paul, having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect in the flesh? And I thought of how the church began with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. That is the beginning of the church. But now people are, have been gripped by this Zionism um, Christianity, whereby everybody is looking at physical Israel and waiting for some national salvation to come to them before um, the church is made perfect by joining to this this saved Israel. Um, and it really is very complicated because there is a lot to, to think about with this. So I don't want to speak too much except point out the fact that when we are waiting for an antichrist to come to Jerusalem, the physical Jerusalem, the Jerusalem of the flesh that now is, um, and not the new Jerusalem that we have been given and that we are part of. If we now wait for an antichrist and we are waiting for the Jews to be saved and to receive their Messiah, are we not trying to be perfected by the flesh? Because we are waiting for, their, for them in their flesh to get to salvation and we require many physical steps. Um, some say there will be a temple rebuilt, there's going to be an antichrist and there's going to be war and all these things. Um, and um, I want to point out that that is us trying to be perfected in the flesh, waiting for things to happen in the flesh when the Lord has already won the victory, when um, we already are seated in heavenly places. And when the Lord said it is finished, we have definitely gone wrong for a very, very long time. And that is why it is so confusing to study the Bible and it takes so long. It's like a puzzle and the pieces just keep getting, you keep having to start all over because we are not mature in our understanding and we are being blown about, about by all these doctrines. But I do sense that we are at a time where understanding is coming, where there is greater awareness um, that things need to be um, looked at and, and that, that we need to be speaking the same things because we have one faith and now we are speaking so many things and it's just getting worse and worse. The division is getting worse and worse. Um, so that is what my point this morning is that we must not try to be ma made perfect in the flesh by looking outwardly. If we look at the word um, in the Esword, the one that says, yeah, um, the one that's tra translated flesh, we're trying to be made per perfect in the flesh. That word, zarx, um, if we read that, it's it basically is a symbol of what's external. It stands for meat and the body. And so it's for external things rather than spiritual things. We're looking at the outward things. And that's exactly what is happening with this whole 
issue of Israel. If we turn our eyes back to Jesus and look on Jesus, we are to look at our Lord Jesus and not at Israel out there. Um, Jesus said um, to be careful when they say, look here and look there and he's in the desert and he's here and he's there. We must keep our eyes on him. Yes, we must be looking for, for um, deceit and we must be looking for signs, but we must not be reliant on signs, if I can put it that way. Our eye must be on the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone. So if we place our eyes back on him, we can actually um, sort out a lot of this confusion regarding Israel. And this whole matter of Israel can lead to great trouble and tribulation. Um, and people could even find that the things that they fear and the things that they believe, the false things that they believe can come upon them because of this. So many people believing so, these lies. So I um, wanted to share that today with you.